elongating sounds derive MADS. So we've already covered what the original MADS are and the derived MAD is essentially the original MAD with some extra rules in which case the lengths of or the count of too long will change and the derived MAD is known as MAD FARA'I and there are a few different rules that surround this and we're going to put them here on the slide as a summary so the first thing to note is if you have the original MAD and it's followed by a Hamza or it's followed by a letter that is Sakin then we're going to apply certain rules so we'll start with when it's followed by the Hamza now if the original MAD is followed by Hamza in the same word then it changes into a derived MAD known as MAD Mutassil if the original MAD is followed by a Hamza but the Hamza is the first consonant of the next word then the derived MAD is known as MAD Munfasil if the original MAD is followed by a Sakin letter which actually has a Sukun on it or if it's part of a consonant which, which has a Shadda on it which implies that the consonant has a Sukun on it as well then the derived MAD is known as MAD LAZIM if the original MAD is followed by a derived sukun then it's known as mad arib lis sukun now the derived sukun we'll explain in a minute on a completely separate slide so the lengths then whenever the original mad is followed by a hamza whether it's in the same word or the next word then the count will be four to five long if the original MAD is followed by a sakin letter or a letter with the Shadda then it must be recited as six counts long and if the original MAD is followed by a derived Sukun then you have the option of reciting it as two, four or six counts so let's go through some examples so here we have the original MAD followed by a Hamza but it's in the same word so you would recite this as four or five lengths long so it would be hum yura'un the original mad followed by hamza at the beginning of the next word now it takes a bit of practice to pick up whether it's the hamza is in the same word or the next word but generally over time you can pick this up or if you obviously you know grammar it will be much easier for you so we, here we have two examples where we have a original mad followed by Hamza which is the first letter or consonant of the next word so we have inna ka and we have alladhi ata'amahum so both of those again with your Tajweed teacher he will check when you're doing your recitations that these lengths are maintained the common mistake is either you shorten them to three long or you over lengthen them to six long so the Mad Lazim is the original Mad followed by a Sakin letter and again a letter with the Shadda on it implies that there is a letter there with a sukun on it so here we have the dod um, with the fata alif which is obviously your original mad followed by the lamb with the shadda which implies there's a lamb with a sukun uh, within it so this would be and this is from suratul fatiha so it should be uh, well known but this is and again you must make sure that this is kept to six long now the original mad followed by a derived sukun so the first thing we have to understand here is what is a derived sukun 
So if we go back, you can have letters or consonants with an actual sukun on top of it, which case it's sakin, or it's part of um, the letter with a shadda, which implies there's a sakin there, but they will both have sak, uh, sorry, with a sukun there, which means they both have a sukun, they're both sakin. Now with both of these cases, the um, last letter, when you're stopping at the end of line, so the round circles are the end of line marker here, so the seen and the meme in the two sentences right at the end will become sakin due to the rules of stopping. Hence, these are known as derived sukuns, i.e. the seen and the meme do not have a sukun on them, but it's derived from the stopping rule that they're going to be pronounced as if they've got a sukun on them. So if you have a, an original mad, which is followed by a letter which is acting as a derived sukun, you have the option of reciting the original mad as two, four, or six long. And this will happen when you stop at the end of a sentence marker, or you pause in the middle of a sentence, in which case it acts as if there's a end of a sentence marker. The only thing to be careful here is for any particular surah, if you decide to do these too long, then you must maintain this across the entire surah. If you do it four long, likewise maintain four lengths across every um, line that you stop on in the surah with this rule. And if you do it six long, then again, you have to maintain six long. So just to emphasize then, um, you can do this as two, four, or six long. And different reciters do these with different lengths. And that covers um, most of the derived mads, which are derived from the original mad when certain rules apply. And your instructor, your Tajweed teacher, they will check that all these rules are applied and they're consistent across your recitation.